I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all, that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. Well, uh, I had just graduated from college. You know I was a communications major. That part was true. So I graduated and I couldn't find a job. I had no idea what I wanted to do and got pretty depressed. My boyfriend at the time said I was holding him back and took off, so that was that. I could have moved home, but I didn't. I stayed out in California, but it's not like I had any friends there. My parents would call and I would just lie about how things were going. I didn't know what I wanted because, I guess, I didn't really want anything. I would wake up and just count the seconds ticking off of my life until I fell back asleep. We were all broken in some way, I think. Some more than others.
The first time I met Father James, I was immediately filled with a sense of peace. It's hard to explain. I guess he just seemed so sure. He asked if I was a believer. I said I'd been raised Catholic, but it never clicked. There's a reason for that, he said. They've been lying to you, all of them. And I knew he was right.
life with the flock was good. We would meet for morning prayer with Father James in the chapel, then meet for breakfast, and then we'd set off to work for the day. Some of us worked the fields, others worked on expanding the compound. We had a school teacher, we had cooks. In the evening we would study scripture or listen to one of Father's lectures. Then it would be time for penance, more prayer, and then sleep. I slept better those early nights than I had in years. I was home. Do you know how good it feels to find home after so long? I would have done anything for Father. He saved me. We were chosen, all of us, by the Lord. Do you know how good that feels? To be chosen? I hope you do. It's a feeling we all need in our lives. And on top of that, Father James took a special interest in me. He said he felt spiritually invigorated by my presence and often called me to the rectory to spend time with him. I'm not dumb, I knew, but I didn't care. I was so honored to be his chosen. I often helped Viola in the schoolhouse. I enjoyed working with the children. We taught them reading, writing, scripture. Viola was one of the most faithful among us. If Anne was like the mother of the flock, Viola was the older sister. I remember one lecture she gave the children on the nature of hell that was so vivid, so unflinching, it had the kids in tears. I told her she was scaring them, and she said, good, they should be scared.
we have all been given our purposes by the Lord. And if we listen close enough to our hearts, if we pray hard enough, we can feel that purpose coursing through us. To excel in our God-given purpose is its own form of cleansing. Some of us are called to labor in the fields to feed the flock. Some are called to train and to defend us. Others to teach our children the true way of things. The Lord calls upon many women to provide succor and relief. Now those of you with husbands may be rightly confused. Is this not a sin? I ask you, do you not love the Lord more than your husband? Would you deny the Lord himself your love? I am his flag bearer. The deceiver changed Father James, though only a few of us seemed to notice. He had new revelations almost daily. Doctrines changed. Actions that would have been terrible sins previously were suddenly permissible, while seemingly innocent behaviors became mortal sins. The others seemed to have no problem going along with it. I wondered if something was wrong with me. Father grew visibly agitated, and as adamant as he was about the sanctity of his new revelations, Something was different. He was scared, and that scared me.
He risked his life coming to me. Somehow he could tell that I was wavering. I'm still not sure how. He was from the FBI, he said, and he was here to investigate the group as a cult. When he said that word, I told him to go to hell. I almost went right to Father James, but I didn't. He left me a pamphlet that talked about the signs of a dangerous cult. At first, I refused to read it. What was the point? How could that have anything to do with our group? But I did read it, and even though my entire brain was screaming at me, I went back to him. He called it the cleansing room, where we would exchange pain in this realm for forgiveness in the next. We'd all gather in front of the altar and one by one we would declare our sins to the flock, each of us given penance to perform in front of the others. Bloodletting, self-flagellation, I saw men break their own bones and women cut off a finger that had caused them to sin. It was true devotion and it was terrifying and wonderful to see.
I think it might have been my fault they found Peyton. We were seen together too often, maybe. But how would they know? Maybe they saw the pamphlet? I don't know. I don't know, but I can't shake the feeling that it's my fault. It doesn't matter. They found him. They told us he had decided to leave the flock. I didn't believe them, but I didn't ask any questions. After that, we moved on. It was like he had never been there at all. It scared me, but instead of trying to get away, I just let myself fall deeper in. I did my best to shut out any doubts. It was easier that way. my flock, I have wonderful news. No. No. <clears throat> my flock, I have wondrous news. The days of reckoning are upon us. Some of you may be afraid. And no. 
my flock, I have wondrous news. The days of reckoning are upon us. Be not afraid. This is the day we have been working towards all this time. The focal point of all history. The end point of all creation. I have seen the signs. I have heard the word of the Lord. I speak the word of the Lord. I am the word of the Lord. Yes, that's good there. Three, five, six, nine. Damn it. And what's the code for the damn safe? Four. Of course. Four. Don't be afraid. There's no need to be afraid. We must go through the flames, but the flames will not hurt us. Not our true selves, our spiritual self. I know his will, and it's time. This world is molded in filth. It's too far gone. They sent demons to test our resolve. They expected us to give up the fight, but here, today, we prove to all of them that we never gave up. Our faith never wavered. Today, we take our place at the foot of the throne of the Lord. Here now, we'll dull the bodies a little. There's no need for it to hurt. Here, drink this. Drink this. Pass these around. Things will go a little fuzzy, but then the flames will take us, and we will join our Lord in his heaven, and be by his side forever, where we belong. Amen. Amen. Boy, I love each and every one of you so much. God bless. That's when they locked the doors. And then Andrew and Leonard started soaking rags and lighter fluid while I, I started handing out the cups. Little paper cups full of crushed up quaaludes mixed with lemonade. Father kept preaching as we drank. They lit the rags and put them around the outer walls. Everything caught so quickly, as soon as everything was on fire and, and people just sat, sat down in it to take them. Something clicked. I I don't know what. I needed to get out. I didn't want to die. I remembered Father's temple and I ran.
The door shut behind me and everything was dark and completely silent. As if the burning chapel and all the people dying behind me didn't exist. The drugs took over then, and it was all I could do to crawl into bed before I passed out. started the fire. Ma'am, I know you've been through a lot, but we need your cooperation to piece all of this together. Who started the fire? Um, pr pretty much everyone. Father James with the first flame, but the others helped it spread. So they weren't coerced? No. They were weeping with joy. People were singing. And you? What did you do? Ma'am? What to say. It's just... Lillian, was it something we did? Dad! I just don't understand how you could run off and join some insane cult. I don't know, Dad. I don't know. You're a smart girl. What were you thinking? Lillian, the things I've heard on the news... Where are you going? So, Lily, have you been having any more thoughts since your last attempt? All the time. It seems as if you almost regret surviving the fire. I don't know. I, I don't. It's so confusing. I didn't want to die, but I feel like I let them all down. Let them down because you didn't save them, or because you didn't die with them? I don't know anymore. Well, listen to me. No matter what, you deserve to live. I promise you. Lillian, you deserve to live. I... I need to go. I, I can't do this right now. I, I can't. you don't want to hear me ramble about mechanical engineering for another 20 minutes. Tell me more about you. You studied communications, right? What kind of job does that get you? <laughs> well, right off the bat, not much. I, I couldn't find work, so I uh, ended up backpacking through Europe for a year after college. Oh, cool. I always wanted to do something like that. I bet it was amazing. Yeah, it was super fulfilling to see all those different ways of life. Really eye-opening. God, that was a long time ago. Man, I'm jealous. I jumped right into work after school. Working 70, what, 80 hours? You know how it is. Just expect to devote everything to it. It's like a, like a religion. It took me a while to see how messed up it was. Yeah, I can imagine.
You have one unheard message. First unheard message sent yesterday at 7.15 p.m. Lil, is, is everything all right? I've been trying to get a hold of you all day. Pl please pick up. I'm worried about you. Okay, just, just call me back. Love you. End of message. To delete this message, press 7. Message deleted. could move on. Pretend it hadn't happened. But here it is. I'm looking at it. I was here. We were all here. And now it's just me. Oh, Lil, Jesus, there you are. I tried to get a hold of you for hours. Where are you? I... I, I had to take care of something. Look, just, just... Are you okay? I was getting worried. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm fine. Um, I'm heading home now. Tim? There's some things I need to tell you. I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all, that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. <laughs> 